The snare should be crisp and the cymbals should ring. Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. The time is now 8.03 a.m. And you are listening to and watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Uh, You guys, 
hope that you guys are doing good out there today. It's uh, it's Tuesday. It is the first of March. Oh boy, three months in, and this year is moving right along, and it's moving right along pretty, pretty quick right now. Johnny Felix, good morning to you, dear brother. Jim Mendoza, what is up? Did we get our patch keys yet? Headed to the bakery now. I can pick you up a couple. Let me know. You know what? We actually, or Josie, we actually did not yet. That would be, that would be so nice. Josie, you know where we're located down here. That would be very nice. I'll be eating for one today. Monica has the day off. So I will be eating for one, but I will keep uh, hers. I put it in the fridge. We got a fridge here. So I can put it in the fridge. For Monica, the time is 8.05 a.m. Ah, uh, so we got, hang on a second now. I got some, I got some environmental news today. I got educational news and I got tax news today, amongst other things that we have on our agenda to talk about. It's Tuesday, the 1st of March. Uh, it is really nice outside, you guys. I don't know if you guys have been outdoors yet, have you? Are you a Good Morning Aurora listener in the garage? Are you a Good Morning Aurora listener in the car? Where are you listening to Good Morning Aurora at? Why don't you let me know that in the chat? Ah, that was a rhyme. Holy cow. Where do you listen to Good Morning Aurora at? Let me know that in the chat. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I do. Thank you very much, Josie. We appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I, I got to say, woke up this morning, and I'll get to the news after this little, little, uh, little speech here, but... Um, I woke up this morning and I didn't take the trash out last night. So I got dressed up, threw on thick socks and threw on some jeans and threw on a long sleeve shirt and threw on a sweater on top of that and grabbed a jacket, came outside, didn't need none of that. Uh, it's really nice and warm outside. So we're making do with just a hoodie today. This is definitely hoodie weather. Shout out to all the hoodie rockers. Um, okay. So. Here's the thing. I'm going to start off in bed with coffee. Davi, good morning to you as well. Good to see you, dear friend. Uh, in bed with coffee. Good place to listen to Good Morning Aurora. And I actually, I'll tell you this, on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, you know, I, I I curl up. I curl up too. I, I get my curl on. You know, get your blanket and relax. Maybe you got a nightstand right by the bed. Put the coffee there. Listen to GMA on the tube or on the laptop. Gloria Gerardo is here. Good morning to you, Gloria. Good morning to you, Aurora. I hope you will have a nice day today. Have a nice day today. It's the 1st of March. Stay safe out there today. Okay, amen. You got it. And yes, spring is popping. Yes, it is. Okay. So first things first, dear friends. And once again, Monica has the day off today. We will admonish her tomorrow and get her some potchkeys. I think that's how you pronounce them. Uh, the Aurora Recycling Collection Point is moving to a new site. I told you I had environmental news for you guys. Now listen to this. This is a great uh, article here in The Beacon. Uh, when it comes to recycling materials in Aurora, from electronics and clothing to books or paint, Officials at the Kane County Recycling Center have decided that with collection opportunities, less is more. Last week, officials announced the decision to close the recycling location launched last year in June at 911 North Lake Street in Aurora and moved the collection point across the street to an Ace Hardware parking store, or excuse me, parking lot at 994 Lake Street. Now, you guys know which Ace Hardware we're talking about, right? That's the one right there at Northgate. Um, Plaza, kind of, you know, down the end a little bit, right next door to Carson's. Um, the new site will debut on Saturday, so coming up here, will be open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays only. Once again, one day a week, recycling collection site. The low total of items being collected at the North 911 North Lake Street site, which was open five days a week, made our city officials think about closing the operation there. New Kane County Recycling Coordinator Chair, excuse me, let me try that again. But we don't gotta sip it right now because I actually just put one word in front of the other one wrong. Victoria Halamanato is here, good morning to you, Victoria. Uh, let me read that again. New Kane County Recycling Coordinator Claire Ryan said, quote, we were having problems not getting enough traffic to justify staffing the site, uh, close quote. And that, 
experimenting with hours of operation and other measures led to making a change. Our options were kind of experiment with the hours to better fit people's needs or have the site unstaffed. And we don't want to go that route because it's easy for unstaffed sites to turn into open dumps. Yes, that is very true. And you know what? That's it happens just like that. That's the that is the that is the good thing about effective monitoring of any site, making sure it doesn't turn into a landfill. Uh, other options were kind of, or excuse me, even though people weren't going down there all the time to drop off materials, we didn't want it to look like, um, you know, a landfill. The former location, according to Miss Ryan, uh, was difficult to find for some and also dangerous as drivers had to navigate some blind spots. Uh, and then last but not least, hours at the new Ace Hardware parking lot site once again, will be Saturday only from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Ms. Claire Ryan said she doesn't think the reduction in hours will have an adverse effect on the local recycling effort. Quote, honestly, we are pretty confident that the new improved visibility is going to produce more traffic than less. How about that? The time is now 8.10 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. It is Tuesday, March First, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Gum says, the sh Good morning, Aurora. I watch and listen usually while getting myself together for the day in my home office. Shouts out to all you home office people out there. Got to have a good home office. Okay, now check this out. I got something new for you guys. Show you something new here. Bam! It's 8, 10 a.m. You know the camera comes on at 8, 10. Got something a little bit new for y'all. See what you guys think. Yay! Yay! Good morning, all of you. Good morning, Aurora folks and listeners out there. We hope that you guys are doing good. The time is 8.11. I am solo dolo in the studio today. Once again, Monica has the day off. But I'm rocking my I'm rocking my East Aurora gear. Hold on, let me see if you can get you a little zoomy zoom. Yeah, you see that. Uh, oh, it's on this side. Uh, very cool, very cool. Uh, I really wanted to get this sign, as you can see here. Hold on, you guys. Let me hook you up. There you go. See that? See that? I really wanted to get this sign in our shot because this sign has actually e hey Michelle Gums, you know that. Um, this this sign has been and has become really symbolic of the show. It's become symbolic of what we do. It's become symbolic of what we're trying to do here. Why is it symbolic? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because the light is on. Always. The light is on. And it's a metaphor. You know, the light is always on with us. The light is always on with you. We are shining. We are doing our thing. We are blessed people. And we're just trying to be a light. You guys have heard me say it before that, you know, I really care about, you know, the, our listeners, you guys and everything. And this isn't just a podcast to just be talking about junk. It's hopefully something that you all can listen to that will make your day brighter happier more positive at least for that one hour early in the morning everybody deserves that the time is 8 12 a.m you are listening to and watching good morning aurora the second largest city's first daily news podcast i'll get the i'll get the camera off just my just my light all right you guys the light is on yes that is right that is totally right my brother okay you guys so i got uh i got something else to tell you guys about i'll turn the camera back on here uh, in just a moment as well so you dear folks can peep out the scenario but I got a piece of news that I want to read to you guys and let you know what's happening so check this out there are some really really good um, initiatives taking place here in regards to education in our great and fine city uh, I got a great piece of news that I want to share with you guys and not only that it qualifies as All right, the city of Aurora is considering expanding an educational program in the city to more than double the number of students who can take part in the classes. The light is on. Josue Pais, good morning to you. Josue Pais is the owner and proprietor of Harry Beast Dog Parlor. Go there and get Fluffy's nails trimmed or his hair did, and you will not be disappointed. 
Aurora City Council members are looking at a $300,000 contract with Hensdale-based Tinkerworks, LLC, for the Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, Mathematics, or STEAM sessions. The program would increase the number of students from 635 in 2021 to 1600 in 2022 as well as expand the number of classes, places where the classes can be taken, and widen the age gap for students able to take the classes through the 8th or 9th grade. Uh, according to Simon Rodriguez, City of Aurora's Youth Services Manager, quote, we were very successful in 2021 when we launched the first full year of instruction. Last year, we had two weeks of instruction. This year, we would open it up to middle school students who can do potentially up to four STEAM-related projects. How about that? Aurora began the STEAM program on a limited basis in the second and seventh wards two years ago. Uh, despite being in the beginnings of the coronavirus pandemic, the pilot efforts offered camps across two sessions during the summer. Now, I remember that. I remember that. You guys remember that, too. Remember that? We, we reported on that at that time. Second ward is um, uh, Alder Woman Wani Garza. Who's the, who's the older person for the seventh ward, you guys? Who is that? Does anybody know who that is? I know Patty Smith is the eighth. Shweta Bade is the 11th or 10th, right? Who is the older person for the 7th Ward? Because Ed Bug is the 9th. Does anybody know that? Put that in the chat, please, and I will give you the world's greatest shout-out if you do. The time is 8.15 a.m. The article continues. Um, okay, so this year, the programs are not only being offered in the summer, but as after-school programs with help from the cities in school group. Uh, great group, we shouted them out, and uh, Simon Rodriguez is heavily invested in those works with that group. In addition, APS Training Academy is joining the effort to offer classroom space. Tinkerworks provides packets for the programs as well as instructors. The company does STEAM projects designed to allow students to foster a love of creating, enhance problem-solving skills, Reinforce and expand on concepts and ideas taught in schools, inspire curiosity, and encourage self-expression. Michelle Gums. That is right, Michelle Gums. That is right. I was remiss. Remiss. That's right. Alder woman Shakita Hart Burns is the older woman of the seventh ward. That is correct. Thank you very much for that, Michelle. Michelle Gums, always looking out for a brother. Uh, okay, where did I, uh, uh, where was it at? Okay, let me see, hold on. Let me, uh, all right, let's start over from the beginning of that paragraph, actually. Tinkerworks provides packets for the programs as well as instructors. The company does STEAM projects designed to allow students to foster a love of creating enhanced problem-solving skills, reinforce and expand on concepts and ideas taught in schools, inspire curiosity, and encourage self-expression. Uh, now, according to Mr. Michael Piggies, the Chief Information Officer for the City of Aurora, the programs are offered to kids who normally don't have the opportunity to participate in STEAM outside of this program. Aisha Saxon, thank you very much. Alder woman, heart burns. Alder person, alder woman of the seventh ward. According to Michael Piggies, um, when you start these kids early in life, you get more representation later on. Absolutely. Amen to that. Amen to that. So I'm real proud of the work we've done with Tinkerworks and the APS Academy. Now let me just let me just say this. So let's read what Mr. Piggies just said again. When you start these kids early in life, you get more representation later on. Start these kids early in life. You get more representation later on. A novel idea. Because people are always like, why aren't there more uh, black doctors? Why don't we have more Latino this? Why don't we have more young this? Why aren't young people getting involved in this? Why is the, you know, why are these professions and these industries so full of people who don't represent the community at large? They're grandfathered in. Because, unfortunately, for a long time, a lot of these kind of great programs, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, not that they weren't being taught, that would be wrong. It's just that access was not available for the wide majority of young 
kids, not even of color, just young kids and perhaps dire economic straits. The parents who are working two jobs just to pay ends, just to uh, excuse me, pay bills and make ends meet. The parents who are dropping off the kids at grandma's house because they can't pay for daycare. They don't have extra money to send their kids to, you know, STEM classes. So these kind of activities that are available free or at low cost are creating and spurring a brand new generation of young, dynamic, like-minded, helpful thinkers. The time is 8, 19 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Monica has a day off. So, you know, when this is usually the time when I'm like, Monica, can you take us to a commercial and give us like three joints and you hear Monica's voice. Don't forget the uh, uh, gazebo bunny. Well, you're going to have to listen to the sound of my voice. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, now the news that I have, though, is it's news that it, 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 it's, it's made me look at life. Well, one of these news articles uh, specifically, it's made me look at life a little bit different. And as you guys know, I talk to a lot of people. I either interview them or we talk, speak, and see how we can work together. Everybody I talk to doesn't always transform into an interview. Um, but one of the things that people have expressed to me is, why doesn't the city of Aurora have more large this is not a, you know, this well, we understand the pandemic had a lot to do with this, but even pre-pandemic, why doesn't the city of Aurora have more large scale community events? Large scale, what do you mean? You know, the kind of big uh, Aurora farmers market style events. Other communities have them, and that's kind of true. I was in uh, Will Met not that long ago. Will Met had a nice outside kind of well, this was last year, but uh, they had a nice outdoor coffee sip craft thing and people were out there with veggies and there was a guy playing the banjo. I mean, it was it was really nice. Um, you go to other places. Geneva does like a downtown thing like that. Um, and Schaumburg does this thing that kind of coincides or uh, excuse me, not, it's not Schaumburg, but if you guys ever heard of Ren Fair, the Ren Fair, it's like medieval dress up kind of stuff. Um, that is awesome. Now, that's not necessarily a large scale community thing. It's, you know, it's a, it's a theme that people uh, take part in. But the point is, why doesn't Aurora have more large scale community events, vendors, outside good stuff? Will we have some of that this year? Well, I we're not in spring yet or summer, but I can tell you about something that's happening very soon. That is kind of like that. So get ready for the Coffee and Brew Expo. Now this will be taking place Saturday, March 5th from noon to 3 p.m. at the Fox Valley Mall. Tickets are $25 and 25% of ticket sales go to Alive Aurora. Uh, you can sip local craft beers and specialty coffee while enjoying live music in the center of the mall. Breweries include Church Street, Foreign Exchange, and Obscurity. Uh, coffee vendors include Java Plus, Gigawatt Coffee, and Enduro. Uh, and for more information or to purchase tickets, I have the link for that, which I will give to you guys. Now, that's one thing, right? That's a big shebang. Taking place in the mall, craft beer? I like how the mall has transformed. I like how the thought of malls has transformed, actually. Malls are not just a place to go on Saturdays with your mom and, you know, your mom's talking to Mrs. Karen from down the street in the shoe store. Why won't you hurry up so we can go to the toy store? No, malls are like, you can come in there, you can hang out, you got craft beers, you're chilling. Uh, malls in America have really taken over. Uh, I think they're trying to redo and rebrand their image because we live in a time now where people can order online. They don't have to go to the mall. They don't have to deal with traffic. They don't have to deal with driving to the mall, parking, going in, going to the bottom, then going to the top, then going on the escalator, and maybe you don't have my size. All of that on a Saturday morning, and just for you not have my size. So 
Malls had to uh, they had to get with it. They had to change, get dynamic with the time. Uh, but anyway, I kind of digressed from that Tinker Works uh, story. So let me finish reading this for you guys. Then I will. I'll give you that link to the Craft and Brew Expo. I promise you. Uh, out of the total number of students who participated last year, uh, Mr. Piggy said 55% were African American or Hispanic, and 45% were male. Uh, according to Simon Rodriguez, at least 50% of the students participating were for families at or below the average median income for Aurora. Organizers are hoping to get that number as high as 64% this year. Uh, the city will recruit students for the program through press releases and through different social service organizations, APS Academy has a um, great program worth uh, investing in. Great team. Shout out to Harish. Um, now, kids who have been in the program in the past want to do it again, and last year organizers said they had to turn down some prospective students. The demand is there. City Council Finance Committee recommended the contract, although Alderman Ed Bug of the Ninth Ward asked why the contract was not bid. Uh, according to Mr. Bug, other times we go this route and inevitably finds, and excuse me, and inevitably someone from the community comes back and says, I could have provided the service better at a lower price. We didn't know that because we didn't go out to bid. Hmm. Uh, according to Mr. Piggy, city officials did reach out to other companies that provide STEAM training programs, but they did not provide the teaching and training that Tinkerworks does. Awesome. The full council will get to discuss the contracts and projects at the Committee of the Whole meeting tonight. Hey. All right. Uh, the time is 8.25 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Anna Sierra, Anna's Custom Treats, is here with us, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I didn't, I didn't mess up my words. I didn't slip over anything. But all of us, all y'all, let's get a community sip because I need to wet my whistle. Oh, gosh. Oh, it tastes so good. The coffee, ladies and gentlemen, the coffee. Oh, let's do it again. One more sip. One more sip and we'll get back to the news. One more. Oh, gosh. All right. Tracy Duran is here. Good morning, Gams fam. It's going to be rainy, but then sunny later. I hope it rains a lot. I love rain. I want. I love bad weather. I need my rain. I need my weather as stormy as possible. You guys know that about me because the uh, the brightness is in our heart. Coyote Duran, a dear friend of the show. Now, he just hit us with a little message about the mall. Coyote Duran says, I'm 51 and still a mall rat. Even if you don't buy anything, and I can always find a great deal, you get lots of exercise from all the walking, but then ruin it with a Cinnabon on the way out. Cinnabon. Uh, Cinnabon. I don't know if I've ever had Cinnabon. I remember I've had Auntie Annie's. Is Auntie Annie still in the mall? The pretzel place? Is that still in the mall? Nicole Astros here. Good morning, Nicole. Is that still in the mall? Um, uh, Auntie Annie's pretzels? You guys had Auntie Annie's, right? The big, huge pretzels. They're soft, and they got the. You can get. Oh my God! Coyote says it sure is. My brother, my man. Shout out to Annie, 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 uh, shout out to Auntie Annie's pretzels. Cinnabon is life. Cinnabon is good, though. Cinnabon is good. I think I've had it when I worked downtown. I don't miss downtown for the Cinnabons. They got, they got one in Union Station. Um, Yeah, good place. Good place. All right, so I owe you a link, and I'm going to get you that link here for the Gigawatt, or excuse me, the Coffee and Brew Expo. I'm going to get you that. But I still got one couple more uh, pieces of news here. And once again, Monica has a day off today. So it's your brother from another mother on the microphone giving you the news. All right. Um, this Sunday, March 6th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., the City of Aurora Community Service Department will host a vaccination event called Keeping Aurora Safe. This will be held at La Siena Restaurant. 2121 East New York Street. It is free and open to the public. Public health and safety are paramount. Scan the QR code on the flyer, which we've shared, or call 331-256-5377 for more information. This is sponsored by VNA Healthcare. Uh, registration is available as well. I have the link 
for that. Now, let me tell you something about this link when I give it to you. Don't get overwhelmed because when you click the link, it'll take you to all the, you. oh my God. It doesn't say on there that you're clicking the link to sign up for the La Sierra um, event. When you click this link, it'll take you to every event that's going on with the Illinois Department of Public Health. You have to search by the date. The date is Sunday, March 6th. So again, when I give you the link, don't click it and be like, damn, Kurt, uh, I can't maneuver. Yes, you can. Okay, uh, now, next piece of news before I get back to our other important topics is March 12th. From 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., there will be a job fair at the Coal Center, uh, which is 101 West Illinois Avenue here in Aurora. Uh, this is hosted by our friends of the Fox Valley Park District. Attend the job fair and get a $10 gift card for lunch, courtesy of the Park District. Um, scan the, there is a QR code on the flyer. Now, I have not been given the flyer yet. Now, nah, but I, uh... Well, I got like 10 unread emails, so I probably did get the flyer. But anyway, you guys know how that is. I'm not the only one in this chat with unread emails. I know that. Um, but there is a QR code on the flyer with which you can register. The jobs that are available are park, grounds, camps, and rec recreation. There's just some of the areas currently open for employment. Uh, in regards to applying and what you can do, like I said, I don't have the QR code, but I have the link. And I'm going to put the link in the chat for you guys right now. All right. Time is 8.30 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. All of you guys are here. It's the first day of March 2022. We are in a new year. We have a new disposition. I'm feeling good. And not only is it, you know what else it is, right? You guys know what else today represents. It's the first day of March, but it's also the first day of something else. Can anybody in the class let us know what today is also the first day of? It's very important. And I'm sure that you guys don't want to be remiss and not know. Uh, Michelle Gums, those pretzels do me in. The pretzel dog is the worst and the best. Man, you guys love or uh, Auntie Annie's. That's a good place, though. Shouts out to Annie Annie's. Um, okay. I don't see anybody say today is Women's History Month. Yeah. You guys know that, right? Come on. Yay! Today is the beginning of Women's History Month, and we are, um, I am excited, I'm happy, happy for a few reasons here though, Jim Mendoza, that's right, that's right, that's what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about, see that, it's the emoji battle, um, here's the thing, you guys know, you guys know, I am the kind of person, and this is the kind of show, thank you Jim Mendoza, I am the kind of person, and this is the kind of show where the voices of anybody doing something positive always have a place on our show. You know that. That's nothing new. But um, I don't know if, I don't know if traditional media, and by traditional media, I mean you know, the, 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 the great channel, the great channels. We're a great channel. But the, the all-time classic broadcast media, when you think of it, I don't know if they've done enough. If they've done enough, dare I say they've not done enough to highlight, share, and proclaim the stories of women who have done great things who've made history. I personally can't tell you um, all of the great historical achievements that women have made over the period of history. What, what I can tell you is that this whole month, so today is Tuesday, uh, with the exception of perhaps the weekend, this month what I will endeavor to do is I will endeavor to give you every day one woman in history fact. I'm gonna try to do that. 
Um, and I look around when I go out. You got Wiso's. You got um, the League of Women Voters. There's a lot of women groups around and everything. Um, and there's a lot of women in, in our city who are doing great things. But every time I look, man, it just, and this is just me. You know, I'm not a pessimist. I'm not a pessimist. You guys know that. I'm an optimist, if anything. I just look around, man, and I'm like, why is nobody caring? It's like for a long time, people didn't give a crap. And the, the cool thing about when you do give a crap is that if you give a crap about somebody else, somebody gives a crap about you. That's a fact. That's a whole fact. We got to stop living in this bubble. We got to stop living in this, in this shell. We got to stop. We just got to stop that, man. We got to, we, we really do. I was at, um, this, so this was last year. Uh, I was at Rosati's over there on Ogden, kind of close to Annie Kinsley's um, office. Annie Kinsley is a great State Farm agent who we interviewed just last week. Um, I was over there, and I'm in Rosati's trying to get a slice and a pop and everything, and the guy who is in front of me is mad he's complaining but nobody's at the little desk and i'm like you know he, he just starts talking it's like they don't got pizzas they don't got pizzas you're gonna have to wait for that slice buddy they ain't got pizzas and i really wasn't tripping i can just leave but this dude was upset and he was like i don't give a sh i'm not gonna swear on the air he was like i don't give a crap as long as i get my pizza now i know this is about pizza and it's not about women's history i know this is about pizza and it's not about the the self-respect that we have and the respect that we give to other people. But this is an anecdotal story, which will tell you that if you are the kind of person who cares only about your pizza and you don't care if anybody else has a slice, well, just wait a minute. Because one day when you want a slice, there may be none for you. The time is now 8.36 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Roar, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Um, Jen Mendoza was kind enough to put the link to Wesos in the chat. Go ahead and check that out. Oh, my God. I forgot. Holy cow. You know what, you guys? You are going to be you. I know that you guys. Listen, we're a family here. You guys know that. Almost all of you in this chat listening right now, I know personally. Some of us have even gone out and had the occasional Chromebacher at Tavern on Broadway, 24 North Broadway, or enjoyed a fish fry there on Fridays. But here it is in the morning time, and I forgot to tell you, here's something real cool coming up, and it qualifies as... All right, now before I read you this, how many people out there, hold on, let's turn the camera back on. As I mentioned, Monica has the day off today, so it's your boy doing all of this. Now let's turn the camera back on real quick, because I got something for y'all. How many out there, let's get the, where the, where the class at? Class, how many out there with a show of hands? How many of you like 60s music? If you like 60s music, put the, I don't know, put the music emoji in the chat. Do you like 60s music out there? Hey, do you? Do you? Do you? You in the red shirt. You like 60s music? I know you do. Okay. Uh, here's the thing. I got some news to tell you guys about. Listen to this. You'll love it. Yeah. Hey. Okay. NECC Women's Circle of Friends. Nicole, thank you very much. Y'all like music. Hosway. Oh, Hosway, I was hoping you put some, you better put some music in there. Who else like Coyote? My man. My main man. Look at all you music lovers. 60s music. Casildo Casey Cuevas. Yeah. Yay! All you guys. If you hear that sound, somebody is ringing our doorbell. Crazy. All right, listen to this. NECC Women's Circle of Friends. Karen Caputo, good morning to you, dear friend. The NECC Women's Circle of Friends join for a shared breakfast on March 12th at 9.30 a.m. in Friendship Hall. Oh, that's you, Josie? 
Hold on, Josie. You guys, I'm going to play some music because I let Josie in. I cannot let Josie stand out there. Josie, hold on a second. We're going to take a brief break. Here, let me play a little music. Josie is here. Guess what, you guys? Guess what I got? Hold on. Let's look at this. I can show you something. This is our very first history was made today. Look at this, you guys. Josie, a dear friend of our show, just brought us. Let me see. Can you guys see this? Josie got us Chien Bella Bakery. How nice. Host, wait, don't open the door for strangers. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the first on-air delivery, though. I had to do it. I had to. Josie Mendoza-Geller just dropped these off. Let me close the door, you guys, because there's a little bit of an echo. Hold on. Hold on. Ah. Coolest job in the world, ladies and gentlemen. I swear to you, coolest job in the world. Josie Mendoza Geller. Um, and uh, she gave us these. Mm. Hold on, let's take a look here. Ooh, wee! Oh my gosh! Hold on a second. Get some camera love up in there. Can you see that? <laughs> Thank you very much, Josie. First on-air delivery in the history of the news, y'all. All right, the time is 8.41 a.m. And she got Curtis and Monica on there. How nice. I will not touch these until tomorrow when Monica comes back because the brother is from the old school, and it's rude. See, I'm old school like that. When somebody gives you the gift for you and your part, you don't eat your part first, right? We old school. It's like when you got the family at dinner. You don't eat till everybody sit down. No, 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 no. So everybody sit down and pray over the food. Nobody's eating. Or maybe that's just at my house. All right, time is 841. Yikes, this time is going by fast. Josie Mendoza Geller, let me clap for Josie. Josie. Yay! Josie, Josie, Josie. All right. Michelle says, somebody's knocking at the door. Somebody is ringing the bell. Um, where did that go? That was quick. Aha, there we go. All right, you guys, let's do this. Karen Caputo, Josie, don't open the door for strangers. This is hilarious. Hello. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. -na -na -na. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. Who makes that song? Who makes that song? Can you tell me who makes that song? If you could tell me who makes that song, oh, Tracy will probably do it, and I ordered two stickers already. Tracy, you got to let other people win. Michelle Gum, somebody knocked at the door, someone ring the bell. Do me a favor, open the door and let them in. Yes, we did. Dan Santis is here. Jen Ingram is here. Jen Ingram is one of the greatest artists in the city of Aurora. You can see her work on the electrical boxes around town and she does a whole lot she is a consistent feature uh, at uh, women art galleries and local art galleries including at 1 East Benton the time is now 843 Coyote Duran that's right it was not Bob Marley I don't know if he did a version of keep a knocking but that version was by little richard that is right the fat boys are back no it's not the fat boys dog the fat boys that's you like 50 you like 30 years <laughs> later oh dan says good morning when are we gonna meet up we need to have that meeting we do dan we do dan is the general manager of bally doyle in aurora 28 west new york street yeah 28 west new york street I know you can't see me. The camera's off, my brother. 
Uh, we're going to get it back on here in a second. I am alone in the studio today, so that's why you see the city, but not me at the morning. Okay, we'll meet up, Dan. I will send you an email, my brother. I'll come by Bally Doyle, and I will sit down, and we will chop it up. And, Dan, you are right. we got a lot of things to talk about. Bally Doyle is a fantastic restaurant here in downtown Aurora, right across the street from the casino. And not only that, it is a great venue for you to get married or something nice like that. You can... Uh, Take your girlfriend up to the top, and you guys can dance all night and take cool pictures, too. All right. Hostway says, I'll eat mine and save Monica's. You're right, Hostway. Don't tempt me, my brother. Don't tempt me. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's move on. I had something I was going to tell you. Oh, yeah. I didn't finish telling you about the... See? This is what happens when you do this on the mic. I need... Uh, oh, my gosh. Listen. Shared breakfast, March 12th, 9.30 a.m. in Friendship Hall. After breakfast, we will be treated to a program entitled 60s Folk. Oh, man. This program, presented by Ina and Jim Hope, a couple who are around that age, will feature folk music and more from the memorable decade of the 60s. All women of the church are invited to join. Be sure to sign up at the church office or at the sign-up station of the church's website. This is New England Congregational Church. New England. Shout out to New England Congregational Church. All right, Bally Doyle's is awesome. I took my nephew and his wife there a few months ago when he was in town. We loved it. He's in the Army. We'll be heading off to Germany in a few weeks for two years. We wish him the absolute best. Mendoza's are looking forward to St. Patty's Family Day at Valley Doyle. Oh, really? All you Irish people going to get your going to get your uh, your patty your patty day on. Okay, I can dig it. I can totally dig that. Now. Uh, another piece of news that I had for you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. March 10th, Virtual Career Fair 2022. Teresa Barrero, Kane County Circuit Clerk, is hosting this great job fair event. Jumpstart your future career. Learn all about what the Circuit Clerk's Office is, career opportunities, and the Deputy Clerk's role. Ha 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 ha. Um, once again, Thursday, March 10th, join on Zoom. There is a QR code. I have the flyer here. I just got it. I will post this later. Medical, dental, vision, insurance, paid holidays, paid vacation, and IMRF retirement benefits. All right. Uh, Shouts out to Kane County Circuit Clerk, Teresa Barrero, 540 South Randall Road in St. Charles, Illinois. Oh, and that reminds me. I got to say something about St. Charles, Illinois today. I got a shout out to St. Charles. Let me, I, Dan, I'm gonna turn the camera on for this because I gotta, I gotta give a shout out. Uh, I met, I met a great person yesterday. I met a man and had a wonderful conversation with this man yesterday. Uh, he is from St. Charles. We got to talking and everything, and he saw me with some gear. He was like, "What are you doing?" I told him about the podcast. Good morning, Roy. He was like, "Really? Wow." Start talking about uh, his life in St. Charles. Older, older white gentleman. His background and mine, two different things. His area and mine, two different places. His, his complete existence, completely different than mine. But you know what the beauty of it all is. <laughs> And this is something that I keep, I keep trying to drill down to you people every single day. All of that, all of those things that separate us were nothing compared to, somebody else is here. Who is that? If you're a listener and you're listening to me right now, put who you are in the chat. This will be my security right now. Um, I got to finish what I'm saying. All of that meant nothing because we share a desire and a thought for our cities, our towns, our neighbors to do good. And he subscribed to the show. I really appreciate that. We were talking about the... Um, I can't think of the name of the grocery store. There's a grocery store out there in uh, St. Charles. That's a, it was a family-owned uh, grocery store, three generations, I believe. And they, um, they're closing, unfortunately. 
the pandemic has not done them well. Um, so we had talked about that. That was quite uh, unfortunate. But I want to say right now, shouts out to the city of St. Charles and everybody in it. We hope all of you St. Charles residents are blessed, healthy, and happy. All right, Davi, it's a great place. The food is delicious and they have a great patio. You're talking about Bally Doyle. Yes. Holy crap. Da Davi, now here's the thing. You're right. You are right. That patio back there is second to none. You could oversee the river, right? The birds are flying and everything. Oh, that's what it is. Jennifer Ryan Mayton, Blue Goose. Yes, Jennifer. That's right. It's called Blue Goose. That's the name of the grocery store out there in St. Charles. Um... Josue, it sounds like grandma's house. Everybody coming over. I know, right? <laughs> they must think I'm cooking or something like that. Can we come in and eat? Oh, my God. Doesn't your parents feed you? Uh, no, they didn't. She had the same doorbell. Old school. Yeah, Blue Goose is the name of the... Um, uh, Blue Goose is the name of the grocery store. It's closing out there in St. Charles. That is correct. Uh, so, shout out to the whole city of St. Charles. I'm going to do something nice for St. Charles today. I think I might write a little post or something. I don't know. I don't know. But shouts out. And I appreciate the gentleman because he was like, you know what? I'll subscribe to the show. He was like, you're talking about the same thing that we all talking about need to hear. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, the time is 8.50 a.m. You guys are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. All right. So I have something to tell you guys about oh and that reminds me I, I i wanna i i gotta give another shout out actually <laughs> gotta give a shout out to my dear friend rachel roseby who is um the host the hostess rather of housewife of horror a great show um and a great and you know just a fantastic person uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing her a year ago. She is an absolutely creative person, and we look forward to... She had a program called Soup for My Family, uh, where she was feeding soup, no questions asked, to those who needed it. Unfortunately, the pandemic came and put a kibosh on those activities. We hope that she resumes those activities. She has a great family. Shouts out to her and fam. Peace and blessings, y'all. More love and good vibes. That is a fact. Okay, now hold on. Because you guys, you guys keep distracting me. I wonder if that person's still out there. I hope so. Well, maybe I don't hope so. Watch it to be the police or something like that. Are you the guy from Good Morning Roar? Uh, it depends. You might be looking for Nick Thompson. Okay, uh, next piece of news I had. I told you about the jobs. I gave you that link. I gave you the other links I owed you. Now, I got one more quick piece of news. Really, really, really quick, guys, and then I will let you, then we'll get to the word of the day here, uh, and I will let you go. All right. Flu vaccination information coming up and services by our friends of VNA Healthcare. Uh, drive through flu vaccination locations and hours are as follows. Remember, there is no appointment needed. Time for a doorbell camera. You know what, Michelle? We have one, actually. We got a doorbell camera here, but I'm it's outside of the studio door. So I would have to get up, walk to the door, go outside and look. And that's going to be dead air on the mic. And if it is somebody who I need to talk to, I can't play enough music for you guys. So they, just, they will have to wait. Okay. Um, and plus, if they don't have my number to text me, then I don't know who the heck it could be. Visual Arts is here. Good morning, team. Okay, VNA Healthcare, 400 North Highland Avenue, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Friday to Sunday, 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And the VNA Healthcare location in Elgin is 801 Villa Street, uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And same for Friday and Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. That's information. Fight the flu. High dose flu shots for ages 65 and up. Um, and uh, this is a flyer that was sent over to us. In-clinic appointments are available at both locations. You can call 630-892-4355. The number again is eight, excuse me, 630-892-4355. Javier Burgos, good morning to you. Clearly not helpful, Curtis. I know. And boy, you lost without M to the V. Okay. 
Uh, what else was there? I think that was it. Rent, ass or excuse me, mortgage assistance is coming. Are you behind on housing costs due to COVID-19? You can apply for up to $30,000 in emergency mortgage assistance paid directly to your mortgage servicer. This is not open yet. Let me say that very clearly. This is not open yet. This is coming soon. The grant application portal will open in April. April. I'm simply previewing it to you now with an additional message that the neighbor project located at 32 South Broadway in downtown Aurora will be able to help you with mortgage assistance. You heard it here first on Good Morning Aurora. The application portal will open in April up to $30,000 in the mortgage assistance fund from the Illinois Housing Authority, uh, excuse me, IDA, the Illinois Housing Development Authority. All right, time is 8.54 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Oh, well, Andrew Michael Weinstock, good morning to you, Andrew. And I said good morning to you, right, Javier? Javier is... Uh, Javier is one of the owners of Java Plus, 1677 Montgomery Road in Aurora. Java Plus are dear friends of Good Morning Aurora. And Javier Burgos is a great man. He has an interesting life story. Javier Burgos worked for the IRS for many years. IRS, right? Or FBI, one of the two. Um, uh, for many years. He has a great and fantastic story. Had the pleasure of interviewing him just last year. Michelle says, do not get me started on mortgage assistance. It makes me furious. You can tell me about it. Tell me about it. No, I understand. And as I've told people before, it's the conditions that we live in as a society that makes this kind of thing necessary. That's what I really deplore. I really do. Uh, we live in an unfair society. I'm not giving you the secrets of fire here. I'm not telling you anything that you do not know. But I, I, I do hope that all of you take a little bit of a more critical look at our everyday collective situation. Um, there's many ways to help. We've said it on the show before. You can volunteer. You can donate. You can help strengthen organizations like Hesed House. Um, you could help to do proactive things instead of reactive. We don't need to have a society that has, you know, all kinds of services when you lose your home. We need to be a society that makes it easier for people to keep their homes. The time is 8.56 a.m. Okay, I'm going to give you Lent. I'm going to give you Lent. I'm going to give you your information about Lent coming up, and then I will rant to you for my last couple of minutes. Um, I told you about this. I told you about that. I told you about the Orion Ensemble Group. Okay. Um, so two Aurora United Methodist churches will partner in a joint Ash Wednesday worship service to open the Lenten season. Wesley United Methodist Church and Flowing Forth United Methodist Church will jointly hold the service. It'll be Wednesday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. at Aurora Christian School, 2255 Sullivan Road here in Aurora. The public is invited at mission and parking are free. Uh, no other details were provided. Last year, Reverend Derek Rogers of Flowing Forth United Methodist Church responded to the COVID-19 pandemic by imposing public drive-up ashes in the ACS parking lot temporary site of the Flowing Forth worship services. As drivers arrived, the pastor left his vehicle and used a cotton tip swab to make the sign of the cross on worshipers' foreheads. Reverend Rogers included a prayer with each in position. Now, a little bit about Ash Wednesday. According to Dr. Derek Weber, Director of Preaching Ministries at United Methodist Church, Ash Wednesday is a call to the Lenten season observance from March 2nd to April 17th, Easter Sunday. He said the season of Lent is essential for those who truly seek to be disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world because a part of what we learn in this time of self-examination is that we are what might be in most need of transformation. Did you hear that? If you did not, I will read it. I will read it again. The season of Lent is essential for those who truly seek to be disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world because a part of what we learn in this time of self-examination, self-examination is that we are what might be 
most in need of transformation. Maybe the problem is not the world. Maybe the problem is you. Maybe the problem is me. Maybe the problem is the way we look at things. Maybe instead of asking people to be nicer, I should be nicer. We should be nicer. Maybe that's the problem. Did we ever think about that? Did we ever think about how our parents used to talk to us? Maybe we don't want to talk to our kids like that. Maybe the way we grew up is not the way that we should continue to make other people grow up. Maybe. Self-examination. Maybe we should look inside of ourself. Word of the day. You know what, Michelle? You got it. Introspection. That's your word. Because I don't think I did a word of the day yet. I've been ranting all day. On this first day of Women's History Month, get after it. Women, make some amazing history today. Love you all. Send me some extra love on Thursday. If you all don't mind, be safe. Love one another. Michelle has to go and get ready for work. Thank you very much for that, Michelle. And the word of the day, Michelle, is yours. Introspection. Introspection is the word of the day. I'm going to put that in the chat for the folks to get before I go here. Um, the time is now 9 o'clock a.m. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's show. Um, I hope that you continue to have a great march here. And when I play the music, I'll put the definition of uh, introspection in there. It's the first day of March. Have a beautiful day. Have a blessed day. And have a positive, well-meaning day today. It's Women's History Month. Women, ladies, make it happen. Good Morning Aurora is here to support you. Take care of yourself and each other. That piano though, right? <laughs> BCP. I see you, big dog. <laughs>